Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards and in this lesson number 182 we'll take a look at the last part three of domain to architecture isomorphism where we will essentially bring together the issues from lesson 179 with the shape of the architectures from lesson 180. You can get a listing of all the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday uh, through my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. We saw in Lesson 179 how focusing just on characteristics of particular architecture styles can lead to some epic failures. Then in Lesson 180, uh, we saw the shape of eight different kinds of architecture styles, kind of when to use them, when not to use them. In this lesson, I'd like to bridge these two to show you some examples of applying the shape of a problem to the shape of an architecture. As a matter of fact, in Lesson 179, we saw this flow of steps to look for the most appropriate architecture style for my system and saw how it could lead to an epic failure. As a matter of fact, this is from Lesson 179. Um, it, situations of the shape of a problem where we're expecting a high rate of change. We need those changes to be done quickly and we're aggressively expanding our business. And we saw that microservices fits that really well and ended up becoming an epic failure. And we learned in 179 that we need to add a couple more steps onto our selection process. Even though the characteristics match, we have to apply domain to architecture isomorphism, making sure that that shape of the candidate architecture style we selected matches the shape of our problem, and then continually measure that to validate that architectural style selection based on changes to business, or maybe to our environment, maybe to technology. So let's go back to that epic failure with microservices because this was in fact one of the questions posted on my website. Uh, what was the solution to the epic failure in Lesson 179? Well, I showed that we chose microservices, the shape being single purpose functions deployed as separate units of software, each owning its own data, with high levels of maintainability, deployability, testability, elasticity, evolutionary. These are its superpowers. And as a matter of fact, those superpowers really do match the shape of our problem. And this led to answering a second question that was posted on my website, developer2architect.com. And that was, it seems like the shape of the architecture really is about its characteristics. And that's not entirely true. You see, the shape of microservices is single purpose functions deployed as separate units of software. But in fact, what was our problem? Our problem, in fact, was or, or I should say the shape of our problem, in fact, were high levels of change. Make change quickly. We're expanding our business. That's about scalability and evolvability. But we also had high functional cohesion, where the functionality of our particular system was all intertwined. That's where the shape didn't match our problem. If we look at other architecture styles, maybe there's a better shape to our problem. So let's take a look at service-based architecture. Well-defined independent domains deployed as separate units. Uh, this forms larger, more coarse-grained services. Now, if we look at service-based architecture's superpowers, it certainly has some match in terms of that high rate of change uh, the agility, the ability to respond quickly to change. It's still an evolutionary architecture because we can evolve different domains or lines of business with this particular architecture style. And it still does support some levels of scalability within a domain focus. But more importantly, 
the reason it matches the shape of that original problem was in fact because the services are more coarse grained, we may be able to contain all of that high functional cohesion within a single separate deployment unit, separate domain service, uh, therefore not having a big ball of distributed MUD, but rather all that coupling within a particular service. And in fact, this does match the shape of our problem a little bit better than microservices. Well, let me show you another example of how to apply domain to architecture isomorphism. This is a different kind of problem. Uh, this is an architecture kata um, called, where's my fluffy? Now this is a problem statement, and we're gonna look at the shape of this, where people who lose their pets, uh, they often post either on Craigslist or maybe flyers in a, in a supermarket or around the neighborhood. Well, local business people wanna go one better, and they wanna create an online service to help find missing pets. Now, they've got some requirements. Uh, location data points of pet sightings. Well, let me think about that. Um, what is the shape of our problem? If we have to find location data points, um, Google Maps does that pretty well. Also, we need to broker pet rewards if a pet is found. Well, rather than writing all of our own financial stuff, why don't we just use PayPal? Users should be able to post photos of missing pets. Well, we do this all the time with Instagram. And revenue generated through pets, uh, uh, pet store ads is how these local business people will make money. Um, well, that could be done by Google Ads. And also, we look at one other part of the shape of our problem. These are local business people who want to make a little bit of money, but also help people who lose their pets. So they probably don't have a lot of money. So I'm thinking cost and simplicity are also going to contribute to the shape of this problem. Well, isn't it interesting? If we combine all of these together and look at the shape of our problem, what we really have is a low cost, simple solution. I mean, this is not a complex website, but we don't have to write a lot of our own software. This is more of an integration problem. So this is a great example of trying to identify the shape of our particular problem. Now, let's turn to the eight architecture styles we saw in Lesson 180. If we look at the core shape of our problem, this is a simple, low-cost website solution. So we're probably going to be sticking with, given those shapes from Lesson 180, a monolithic architecture style and not kind of dive into the distributed world that gets kind of complex. Well, do you notice right below me there, <laughs> kind of the shape of our problem. As I've drawn it, which architecture style do you see here that matches that kind of shape? And in fact, the microkernel architecture style matches that shape pretty well. Low cost, fairly simple, but offers configurability, configuration, where each of those plugins in the microkernel or plugin architecture style can be an adapter to an existing service that we interface with. And therefore, we can continue to plug in different kinds of services, take services out, replace different services. And the shape matches that architecture style pretty well. Now we can take this one step further as well, because what about the core system? What is the shape of that? We could use either a layered architecture, again, the shape of that being monolithic, which our core system is, um, but with uh, functionality grouped by technical area, user interface, business rules or business layer persistence, or you know, we can group it by domains. Given the fact that we don't have probably a lot of domains within Where's Fluffy, um, layered architecture within there might be a suitable fast option. And so now we can see where we apply the shape of our problem to the shape of the architecture uh, to further qualify and select an appropriate architecture style. 
So this has been Lesson 182, Part 3, the last part of Domain to Architecture Isomorphism. Thank you so much for your questions, by the way, because that's what led to this lesson to kind of bridge the shape of a problem to a shape of the architecture. So thank you so much for listening, and stay tuned in two more weeks for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.